I am Jillian Sidoti. <laughs> and I'm Nate Dodson. Crypto and dollars can coexist. And this is why. Bitcoin has actual utilitarian value. The problem with Bitcoin is also the reason why it's so incredibly valuable is because it's limited in supply, right? You can't create nor destroy Bitcoin. Bitcoin can get lost. Somebody could lose their wallet or their password or whatever, and, and then it's gone. So that's the thing about Bitcoin. Then there's Ethereum and Ethereum utilitarian value, right? You can build things of Ethereum. And so we see a lot of other cryptos that are actually built off the Ethereum platform and exist. And Ethereum also has utilitarian value. It can be used for smart contracts. It can be used for record keeping. There's a cryptocurrency out there called uh, Cardano, which is used to keep track of students in Africa. There's the monetary value and using it as a currency. And then there is the utilitarian value and using it for something else. And so we see a lot of that. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that back, you know, when the Model T was created by Ford, soon thereafter, there were like thousands of, maybe it wasn't thousands, maybe it was more like hundreds of car companies that sprouted out in the United States. And only three of them have survived technically from that time. So I got a question for you. The big selling point of Bitcoin is it is limited. From what I understand, the mining is actually part of the managing transactions for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. What happens when we reach a limit? Let's just go back because we're talking about like this limitation is a bad thing. And really, it's not a bad thing if you think about it. Because at the end of the day, we printed a lot of dollar bills. And now we're seeing the results of printing and printing and printing and printing. Right. It's yep. Like that, that we also have to. I think for. that looked into this and our money supply M2, when there's like different levels of money, has gone up 400% since 2000. Mm -hmm. Like there's all this inflation now. I'm surprised there hasn't been inflation like this all along the way because that's the increase of the money supply. Terrifying. But, you know, reflecting back on the Bitcoin, having that natural cap or having it backed by gold or backed by some precious metals, all of a sudden you introduce the limitation and now you've got appreciation of the value of the currency versus a depreciation of just print more, 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 more. What's the value of fiat money? The economy sets it at, which is the problem I have with fiat money. If we, you know, we're, we talked about inflation in the last month was 8.6%, which forced, I have my own opinions about the Federal Reserve. I'm on Ron Paul's side of all this, where to me, we should have audited and ended the Fed long ago. They, in my opinion, they serve nothing but to screw things up. And I've seen this. I remember I took macroeconomics in high school. Alan Greenspan was like, like like the messiah <laughs> of, of the Federal Reserve. And it turned out all of his policies at the end of the day were junk. And we ended up, you know, in a recession and everything went to hell in a handbasket after that. We saw the dot-com bubble happen. And, you know, and then Alan Greenspan was no longer like this hero. And then and then it happened again in 2008 where we saw the market market crash and Alan Greenspan was, was blamed again because of his policies. So I think, you know, Jerome Powell is going to find himself in a very similar situation. We printed too much money and now we're reaping those results. We're reaping those consequences. 8.6% inflation, interest rates by the Fed are raised in a day 0.75%, which is the most it's been raised. And I think it was 30 or 40 years in a single moment. And they're thinking about raising them again in July. And we can all go back in history and say, this has happened before. We've seen this before. It's like, yeah, we've seen it before. And the people who always get screwed aren't wealthy people. And it's not even poor people. It's always the middle class. And it's every time we do it, we just shrink that middle class more and more. And this is an argument for cryptocurrency, because if, you, if all things created equal, it, it always stays the same. The supply always stays the same and it transcends borders and it transcends what's happening in a geopolitical climate at any time. And that's why crypto is a good thing. Get a little control over it because right now there's, there's no control over it. <laughs> and I've heard the SEC is hiring a whole bunch of attorneys to get in a little deeper and making sure that all of these tokens and coins, well, either fit under the investment regulations 
or fit under commodities regulations. Mm -hmm. But no matter what, I think the government's doing all that they can to kind of take control of it. Which is exactly what the antithesis of crypto is supposed to be, right? It's not supposed to be under the control of any government. I'm not really sure that's a great thing, right? Obviously, there's a lot of junk coins out of there and things that aren't accepted. But I just kind of think it's like Discover Card. Discover Card's not accepted everywhere and not all cryptocurrencies are going to be accepted everywhere. So I think the value is going to be come once we determine where it's going to be allowed or used or, you know, accepted. And right now it's not accepted in too many different places. Well, let's be honest. What's the difference between, say, using a cryptocurrency and using a credit card that, yeah, it's backed by a US dollar. That really is kind of the same thing as a lot of these junk coins. Why can't we just say, okay, well, now this crypto pick one and start holding it in banks, start having more a easy conversion where it can be used everywhere similar to a visa. There's no reason it can't. I mean, there are crypto credit cards out there. There are crypto ATMs. You can go and you know get Bitcoin. I just saw it in the gas station literally two days ago when I was getting my car washed. There's a Bitcoin ATM machine there. Not to mention El Salvador, they have gotten rid of their currency altogether and now only use Bitcoin as a currency which, you know, too bad for them, unfortunately, because we saw a drop from a high of $60,000 and kind of stabilization around 30 to 35,000. And now it's, it's sub $20,000, you know, but we also look at countries where there's a lot of, I believe like Zimbabwe that has a lot of problems with counterfeiting cash. So they're a completely cashless society and Bitcoin solves those problems, right? Because it's digital, it's somewhat hard to break into it's you can't there isn't or at least i don't know of a way of counterfeiting bitcoin so i mean things like that and i'm not even saying bitcoin is the number one i think there's probably more useful better environmentally better cryptos out there like the one that is actually being sued by the sec which is xrp by ripple and that also has a finite amount but it's a huge amount and things like that that are fast, efficient, and again, a form of automation make a lot of sense to me. Definitely think it's still going to be the wave of the future, especially as the dollar gets weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see where it turns out or frankly, at the end of the day, which ends up being the big uh, utilized in daily business and daily practice. Right. All the cryptos can't be make it. There's only <laughs> going to be those few. No, I mean, because that's just like, that's back to where we are right now with, you know, the euro and the yen. And that, that's another one. The yen dropped like precipitous amount just the other day. So do fiat currencies drop and go up like cryptos right now? No, but those, there's at least some potential stabilization in the place with the fact that there's nobody who can print more. It exists or it doesn't. <laughs> Very true. Other than just doubling, redoubling and doubling some more, the money supply <laughs> like our government has done. And even no, beyond that, like you should just go to the, a cashless monetarialist back to the olden days of barter and trade system and call it a day. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be in, but then you'd be out of a job. Can I pay oh, you God. Tuesday <laughs> with the Bitcoin today? <laughs> Real quick question for you before we end. Do you have any offerings right now that you guys are writing at Crowdfunding Lawyers where they allow crypto investments? Uh, we have quite a few offerings that are going on the blockchain for some really unique types of investment options, mm -hmm. such as the biggest things are carbon credits. Okay. And we have multiple clients that are saying, okay, these carbon credits have value, but it's really difficult difficult to trade it and to track it. And so they're finding, okay, if we can turn them into the NFTs and have a validation system to make sure that whatever is in the NFT is in fact been validated and there's value there to create more of a equal open trading market 
in that space. Okay, so, but we're talking about two different things because when we're talking yes. about cryptocurrency, we're talking about a currency, like something you trade this currency for goods and services, right? But with an NFT, which is a non-fungible token, you're talking about that itself has its intrinsic value and it's not necessarily used as a currency because it's a non-fungible token. You can do artwork, you can do, you know, record keeping contracts, things like that. Or, you know, I once some time ago had a client who wanted to put, you know, few futures contracts for agave for a tequila company on the blockchain. And the blockchain is really just a system of keeping track of things electronically, unlike cryptocurrency. So you're talking about really selling, like allowing the investor to have a piece of the blockchain, not necessarily invest in a stock with Bitcoin, not buy a stock with Bitcoin, but rather get a piece of the blockchain as their stock. Correct. And we do have a few deals that have been open to accepting cryptocurrency as a form of deposit. And we will include a, the value is pegged on the day of acceptance. Oh, okay. Okay. Which when you have such a wild valuation going on, that can mean a big difference. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to the biggest amount, we're, we're not seeing a lot of Bitcoin or other kind of the moving cryptos, but a stable coin, mm -hmm. something that's tied to the dollar absolutely is being accepted. And well, there's just a little bit more reliability behind it as well. Yeah. And let me ask you personally, have you invested? We were talking about non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Have you invested in any NFTs? And if so, which ones? I haven't invested in any of them, mainly because I don't understand them. I don't understand where their value is. I see it for like these carbon credits. I see it to reflect some ownership of something else that now all of a sudden it's like having a car title, but you're not relying on the DMV to actually keep up with it for you. It's already just handled through technology. Yeah. I don't yeah. I still understand why we can't vote through blockchain. It just seems like it would be so easy and so trackable. Oh, I agree with that. But I do see, you know, some kind of value in NFTs in the sense that, you know, since we're going to so many things in a digital space, artwork to me in a digital space makes sense too. And somebody says, well, you could just copy it. Like it's a, if it's a picture online, you could just copy it. Yeah. Do you know how many you know versions of starry night there are out there it doesn't make it the original right you can get a print yep. of starry night you can get a mug that has starry night on it you could get i actually have a one of those uh jigsaw puzzle of starry night it doesn't make it the original right starry night the mona lisa is one of a kind it's one and only and and i think that's you know if you get an nft that's one of a kind and then you put it up on a digital screen in, in your living room that's you own it. That's yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation about crypto and NFTs and blockchain. And I'm not really sure we solved any issues or figured anything out, except that right now the dollar is seemingly out of control and there's got to be a better solution. I'm Jillian Sadoti. And I'm Nate Dodson.